just answering a little bit what uh, among others Surbhi was pointing out no? how to do fundamental analysis so how to analyze these reports how to think about what to highlight okay how to do fundamental analysis I'll just walk you through some of the material but let's first uh, go through this material that we were covering yesterday so you're going to go through the paper I'm not going to cover this topic anymore uh, you know uh, like uh, there are four types of diagrams obviously okay what are the four types of option positions yeah okay short put short call long put long call okay this comes from you should also know the combination where it's coming from because everywhere you have to start thinking like a computer even the stuff that is obvious to you you should try to explain it through uh, to yourself like with baby steps like a computer so that comes from two types of positions long and short okay and two types of options puts and calls you combine them and you come up with four types of option positions so this also you should go through everything should be uh, disaggregated to a step-by-step -step analysis explaining it to yourself as if you you yourself are a computer okay everything step by step so now I'm not going to go through this in detail but I'm going to just walk you through some of the lo logical ways to think about these uh, hockey stick diagrams okay these profit pay, uh, 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 profit profiles and payoff profiles you're going to do it yourself okay but I'm just going to go through what we were covering yesterday. So we started the recording. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So uh, what did we say yesterday? The first thing you notice about this diagram is, uh, so it will also help some of the people who are not, at, not present yesterday. Okay. So the first thing you notice is where is this, uh, uh, there's a part which is constant. Okay. So it seems to be, this is above the zero line. So you notice whether it's above the zero line or below the zero line. Okay. In this case, you notice it's above the zero line. So it automatically means that there's a profit. Okay. So the question is basically the question you're trying to answer when we're trying to evolve a systematic uh, set of logical steps to find out the answer. Okay. So uh, the, the, the first thing you notice is this is above the zero line. So this is a profit. So it's showing a constant profit. So automatically you come to the conclusion that this must be reflecting the profile for what long option or short option. Yes, Ganotra. Long option. I'm not sure because you're not there yesterday and you're not thinking through Gil was also not there yesterday so if the profit profile is up if it's above the zero line then what is it likely to be short, short option or short option why okay you're not clear you have to go back and revise all this stuff it's above the zero line means it must be a short option position because only when you sell an option do you earn premium when you buy an option like when you're buying car insurance you have to pay out money so it's not no question of having a profit okay so therefore if you're getting a profit that means you must have be you must be selling an option okay that's what you th should think okay straight away when you see this okay now the question is so you know this is for a short option position now the question still remains is it for a short call position or a short put position okay so this you see okay how do we work it out you have already found out the answer but let's look at it more logically how can you figure it out logically so that you don't have to memorize anything okay so you figure out you look at it you see that the strike price is 100 okay you see that the strike price is 100 and what is this part which is constant here constant profit constant profit has to refer to a scenario where you're selling the option and just collecting the premium okay and there's no claim to be paid out there's no no the option is not being exercised against you because if you sell the option when the guy who buys the option when he exercises then you have an obligation you understand that as the seller of the oblig uh, of the option you have an obligation you have collected the premium now if the guy wants to exercise the guy who bought the option or who's holding the long option position if he wants to exercise now you have an obligation you understand that everyone right just like an insurance company if you have sold fire insurance and somebody's factory burns down and they file a claim now you have to you have an obligation to pay on that claim right so same concept you have seller of option if there is exercise or filing of a claim in insurance you have an obligation to pay if you have an obligation to pay then obviously you don't have a clean profit because out of some of the money that you've collected for the premium you have to pay out some of that in the claim or maybe all of that or maybe more than that right so therefore uh, usually it's more than that but you're collecting premium from many many people as an insurance company so you eventually make a profit so 
but here you are showing a clean profit okay that means you are not paying out anything which means the option is not being exercised okay i'm doing it in real baby steps so but i want to make sure that everybody understands the logic and it'll help you to understand how options work also better so here you see this entire set of scenarios remember this is scenario analysis at expiration this is all scenario analysis at expiration right you have a hundred strike call and you are asking and you are doing a profit plot profit and loss pnl plot for what happens if the stock price or the underlying asset price is $10, $70, $80, $90, $100, $120, 130 In each of these scenarios, what is my PL? And I plot it and I get this graph. Okay. So I see I have a constant profit, which means I'm just collecting the premium. So it's a short. Now the what question is, is it a short call or a short put? How do you answer that? You see that for all prices below the exercise price, all prices below the exercise price the uh, below the strike price the holder of the option is not exercising can you see that okay so that is that's clear from the chart right there is no exercise happening for all prices below the exercise price below the strike price that you can see clearly that's why you're collecting the clean premium okay now there could be the, the question is whether it's a call option or a put option let's see if it's a put option okay if it's a put option and the strike price is 100 okay and the underlying asset price at expiration is 70 do you think the guy will exercise yes, sir. rajan is saying no why no is my question clear we are considering now we are still confused whether this is a put option profile we know it's a short option profile okay but we don't know whether it's a short put or a short call so we are just taking them one by one okay so let's say first we think assume it's a short put and see if it makes sense if it doesn't make sense then it's probably a call but we'll we'll confirm that independently again okay so first we take the case of a put could it be a short put profile okay so if it's a short put profile we are seeing a case where the strike price is 100 and the market price at expiration is 70 and we are seeing that this guy does not exercise is this likely no but rajan is saying it's likely right that if you're holding up now see what is the problem here with what you're saying i'm going to go a little bit quickly through this think about it this think about it logically like this go back and play back the video and understand the logical steps clearly what is the logical step here what does the short put give you uh, the put gives the other guys holding the put okay he's long the put okay so that gives him the right to sell the underlying asset at the strike price which is 100 so when the market price is 70 do you have an advantage in selling the uh, underlying asset at 100 yes or no would you like to sell it okay. when the market price is 70 would you like to sell the underlying asset at 100 yes, yes or no yes, yes. yes obviously right because you can clean, make a clean profit you can buy it in the market at 70 and sell it and sell it through the option exercise at 100 are you following so because the put option gives you the right to sell the option underlying asset at the strike price and the strike price here is 100 we are considering a scenario of 70 everyone can see the fonts you can see the price Rahardik glass bench okay so 70 we are considering the scenario for 70 when the market price is 70 if i am holding the right to sell at 100 obviously i'll exercise it because I have a clean profit of 30 gross profit at least of 30 uh, 30 dollars is this clear this is how you should think put option gives you the right to sell at the under uh, the underlying asset at the strike price strike price is 100 what is the current market price we are considering the scenario for 70 so our current market price is 70 so if I if the market is at 70 and I have the right to sell the underlying asset at 100 why won't I exercise it it's a clean profit is this clear to everyone yes I'm not getting it emphatic yeah, enough. Yes, yeah. Okay. So maybe I'm going to uh, to uh, you know uh, taking it at too basic a level, but I want to make sure that everybody understands all the baby steps. If you clear if you clear your concepts like this, then you'll never make a mistake. Yes. So we are convinced. Okay. So now you see all these cases. So obviously I'll exercise. Obviously I'll exercise. So therefore this cannot be a put option. You can repeat this analysis for 80, 90, 100, uh, 80, 90, 95 okay and what is the rule we derived yesterday based on the analysis that Shakshi Agrawal had given us the scenario analysis we derived the rule that anytime you're in the case of a put option when the market price is below the exit whenever you have positive intrinsic value at expiration you will exercise remember so in the case of puts if the market price is below the strike you will exercise because you can make a profit you sell it at the strike and the market prices uh, you sell it at the strike and you buy it at the market price and you ca capture the profit 
right? In the case of calls, when there is intrinsic value at expiration means that the strike price is below the market price and calls give you the right to buy, we'll come to that, okay? The calls give you the right to buy, are you following? <coughs> you have to get comfortable, calls give you the right to buy and if the market price is higher than the extra and right to buy at the exercise price, so therefore if I'm buying at the exercise price and the market price is higher, then I can make a profit again, yes. buy it at the exercise price and sell it at the market, capture the profit, right? So the rule is basically for ex exercise or not to exercise at expiration. If there is any positive intrinsic value, you will exercise, okay? But you should really go through the full an analysis that Sakshi Agarwal gave us that day in the class is that you look at your profit in two scenarios. You already paid some money to ex uh, buy the option, whether call or put. Now, if you exercise, are you able to reduce the expenditure for the purchase of the option or is, are you able to not reduce it? Okay, so in that case, you, you find out where, in which scenario you make more money or you, may, or you lose less money and then you exercise. This is clear? Okay, so the basic rule is that whenever there is positive intrinsic value, you will exercise the option. So here we can see clearly, yeah, I'll just come to you. So here we can see clearly at least the first part of our analysis that this is not, this cannot be the uh, payoff uh, profit profile for a short put because it's not showing the what we would expect in a short put situation. Yes, Tarun. Use the mic, use the mic, uh, give him the mic, Sakshi. Sir, as you are saying that we will actually minimize our losses. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is a scenario, in those scenarios only that there is a profit uh, in some of the scenario. In the further scenario, there is a situation where we are getting a positive, uh, positive intrinsic value. Whereas uh, you are saying that we will also uh, take into Market consideration that situation yes. where the intrinsic value will be uh, reducing our losses. Yeah. So, uh, no, I'm asking whether we we'll also, uh, uh, like, uh, apply this situation or consider this situation even if we are having a situation where we are having a positive and risk value. No, no, I, I didn't understand your question. Do you take First, a positive and risk value, sir? No, give me an example through whatever you're saying. What, sir, if you can. for example, that you are saying that uh, at that time when Sakshi gave an example, uh, we were having a loss of two uh, two dollars. Whereas, in which uh, scenario? Whether you exercise? With, when we were exercising uh, and there was a premium of... Uh, well, shut seven. it properly. Is it properly shut? Yes, yes sir. And there was a premium of 7, mm. whereas uh, actually the market price was giving us a profit of only 5. So we exercised at that time uh, and taking a loss of $2. Okay. That was what uh, Sakshi said. Yeah. So I am asking when there is a loss of $2, whereas we also have a situation where uh, market price may be uh, more than uh, 10 dollars so we'll be having a profit of three dollars over our premium of seven dollars no, 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 I'm still not. Let's take an example actually, one sec. Uh, let's take a, I'm still not able to follow what you're saying. See, what, let, let me, maybe, let, let me explain the rule once again. For exercise, the rule is very simple, whether you'll exercise an option or not, okay? Your question of exercising the option only arises when you're long the option. When you're short, that's not your decision to make because the other guy is making that decision, okay? The guy who's long the option. So when you only have to decide whether you're whether to exercise or not when you're long the option, okay? And if you're long the option, you can clearly see that this is the kind of profile that you have, like this kind of profile when you're long the option, because there'll be a constant loss profile, because that is reflecting the premium you paid to buy the option, okay? So, and this is for all the scenarios where you don't exercise the option, you have that constant loss. And here you can see that your loss starts to reduce. Can you see that? So it is not actually the premium, it's is, is basically from the strike onwards and that's where we come to this rule of intrinsic value. So whenever there is positive intrinsic value, you understand what can you capture if there is any positive or zero profit, uh, positive profit, sometimes we, if, if for at the money options we say intrinsic value is zero, okay? Or even for out of the money, we would just put it at zero, not negative, okay? So uh, the point is that you have already paid out some money for, for, for the purchase of the option, now, the only only time when you will exercise is when exercise itself gives you just that exercise isolated uh, activity of exercising the option and squaring the position in the market. If it gives you any kind of positive profit, you will exercise it. And that's what I'm saying when I say, when will it give you a positive profit when there's positive intrinsic value? 
okay so you can't you have to write it as intrinsic value has to be written separately for calls and puts because in the case of calls intrinsic value will be positive when the market price is above the strike remember when the market price is above the strike for calls because calls you'll buy it at below the market and sell it in the market capture some profit in the case of puts the market price will be below the strike because you'll sell it at the strike and buy it back in the market and capture this profit right so whenever there's positive intrinsic value that it makes sense for you to exercise the option because it allows you to reduce your total even if the total profit captured okay like in this case you paid seven dollars for the option okay now even if the market is at 68 it still makes sense at 68 what is the intrinsic value of this option how much intrinsic value do we have at 68 in the put option now we are looking at a put option so I bought a put option with a 70 strike and the market price at expiration is $68 so what is the intrinsic value of this option $2 somebody told you Burma told you so you, you are just repeating $2 oh, 70 minus 68 okay so intrinsic value is basically you have to figure out what can I make by exercising this option and squaring the position immediately in the market okay can what can you capture that way you exercise at 70 you sell it at 70 and you buy it back at 68 you capture two dollars so there's positive intrinsic value so whenever there's positive intrinsic value what it does is it allows you to reduce the total of either reduce the total amount of premium the net premium that you end up paying first you pay seven dollars and then eventually you are able to reduce and make two dollars profit so your total loss is five dollars okay or it in this case sometimes the intrinsic value may be more than like here the premium is seven dollars you have to only make up seven dollars to get to zero but the intrinsic value may be twenty five dollars in this case also you will exercise so whenever there's positive intrinsic value you will exercise because it either allows you to reduce your total loss or it adds to your profit okay does that clarify your doubt okay so this is the way is everyone clear about this remember all these concepts because repeatedly i'm seeing cases where i'm asking questions about concepts that have been taught in the class okay either cases like you do where you are not present yesterday okay so you have to revise what is being taught okay that's why the videos are being put up so you can easily relive the whole class the only thing you can't do is ask questions because you were not there right but you can ask questions the next day about what you heard right so you have to revise these concepts if you're not learning this concept this entire time exercise is a waste of time for you because after one semester you'll forget everything then what's the point <coughs> when you go for your interviews if people I don't know if people are going to ask such technical most of the time people don't seem to ask technical questions uh, especially not on derivative products okay they ask questions like how many brothers do you have what's the name of your dog and all this kind of stuff so but sometimes they do ask technical questions like care ratings asked a lot of technical questions okay so uh, so this part okay so uh, so is this clear now we go back to uh, having taken that detour to answer Tarun's question we are going back to the let's say this particular case right I'm trying to teach you the the logical steps that you'll go through please make sure you go back and practice and satisfy yourself that you're able to crack all the diagrams in this way if you don't do that exercise you will not understand it okay and if you do it once you'll understand it for life then you don't have to ever revise revise this stuff again okay so what did we say we see that there is a constant profit in scenarios where the exercise the market price is below the strike price okay so when so this cannot be already proved that this can't be for a put option okay so therefore it must be for a call option but let's satisfy ourselves okay that it's actually making sense for a call option okay which is so now let's look at it so it's a short position that's why we have the positive premium now does it make sense from a call option point of view okay so what is happening here say let's say we take a case of $80 when the underlying price is at $80 at expiration okay and the strike price is 100 and we see what is actually happening okay what is happening here we are seeing that there's a case where the guy is not exercising the holder of the option is not exercising okay that's why I'm able to capture the full premium right so does it make sense when the market price in the case of a call we are considering a call option when a, in the case of a call option the strike price is 100 and the market price is 80 does it make sense that the guy is that the holder is not exercising the option does it make sense no who is saying no Tanya give her the mic why does it not make sense is my question clear <coughs> yeah is my question clear 
Then if the market price of underlying asset is hundred. No, no, market oh, price is eighty. Yeah. We are then considering. Then we are considering asset. What? No. Does it make sense or does it? No. My, exactly. Maybe my question is you have to be, pay attention to my question. The question is a little convoluted. Now, Gavarma, don't help her. <laughs> the question is a little convoluted. The scenario, the facts are these: that the strike price, that is support, that's a call option. Okay, the guy is holding a call option and the strike price is 100 the underlying price at expiration is 80 and the facts are showing that the guy did not exercise the option the question is does it make sense your answer was no at, at, uh, the strike price was 100 and the exercise price is 80 strike price and exercise price are the same no, sorry market price is 80 yeah so uh, we should not exercise it. Yeah, so it makes sense. The answer to my question is it makes yes. sense. So first you have to answer the question as it is framed. Sometimes you have like questions with double negatives. You know, like so all kinds of like when you board the aircraft, you see they have these questions. Did somebody never check? Did, did nobody ever check this bag before? Did, did, did nobody Market interfere with this bag after you packed it? That question actually has a double negative the way it's framed. So you have to be careful about how the question is framed. So is this clear, guys? Yes, yes, that it makes sense. Yes. That why should he exercise? Because what is what would he do if he exercised the call option with a strike of hundred gives him the right to buy at hundred? Okay. So why should he buy at 100 when the market price is 80? Because he can buy it cheaper at 80 in the market, right? So he should not buy. There is no profit here to be made for him. So it makes complete sense that he is not exercising. Okay. Now let's confirm it one more time. Let's look at the last example of 130. When the price is 130, when the underlying price at expiration is 130 and I have sold a call. We are still confirming the call situation. We are just being 100% sure that it's a call. So I sold a call and the holder of the call and what is he doing? It shows that what is my situation when the underlying price is 130. I'm making a pretty big loss, probably something like 25, 25 or something like that. Okay. So say $25, I'm making a loss of $25. Now, does this make sense? Yeah, because when first of all, will he exercise? Because obviously this is in negative territory means I'm not able to keep all my premium. So which means the guy must have exercised. Okay, so first of all, first ask the basic question when the market price is higher than the exercise price and the guy is holding a call option. Okay, the market price which is 130 is higher, market price is 130, the exercise price is 100. Okay, and the guy is holding a call option, does it make sense that he will exercise? Why not? What is the rule of exercise? Go back now to the rule of exercise. Positive intrinsic value. So when the when the strike price on a call option is 100 and the market price is 130, we have shifted our discussion now to the call part, no? Right? If, because if it's not a boy, it must be a girl. So now it was not a put. So we have seen we have assumed that it's a call, but we are just reconfirming that it's actually a call, right? So we are now in the call situation. So is this clear? Yes, sir. Right? That uh, when the market intrinsic value is positive, so he will exercise. Is this clear? Okay. So he will exercise. So that is consistent basically with the fact that it's not showing me the constant profit. It's showing me a loss. Okay. Now what is the extent of the loss? When he exercises the option, what do I have to do? I have to, we're now coming back to the obligations of the option seller, who is also referred to as an option writer. Okay. So the oblig obligations of the option seller in a situation where basically the obligation is that whenever the holder of the option wants to exercise okay now the holder of the option could be a madman also he might want to exercise even when there's negative intrinsic value the bottom line is that you have to follow his uh, instruction you have to basically allow him to exercise that's your obligation under the contract okay remember option is a contract okay so you have uh, corresponding obligations okay so in this case the guy wants to exercise the call option which means what is the strike price 100 the call option gives the holder the right to buy the underlying asset at the exercise price at the strike price okay so therefore you will have to sell him the underlying asset at 100 okay you will have to sell him the underlying asset at 100 and what is your loss situation and now remember you can't have a you have to have a square position you have to calculate all your pnl situations assuming that you have squared all your positions so if you have to sell the underlying asset at 100 you need to buy it back okay 
or you need to buy it first so there you have to buy the underlying asset and what is the market price 130 okay <coughs> so you are ha you have to now buy the underlying asset at 130 and sell it to him at 100 so you're losing 30 dollars is this clear you have a loss but earlier you collected five dollars of premium yeah but, but i'm saying on a gross basis on the exercise on a gross basis you're losing 20, 30 dollars okay and then adjusted for the premium you're losing 25 dollars that's why you see that the plot here <coughs> The plot here is that 130 minus, uh, you drop this here, 130, the corresponding plot is minus 25. You can see this, okay? So it's minus 25. So you can see this is reflecting the fact that you lose $30 on the gross exercise part of it. And then you uh, adjust it against $5 income received for selling the option. <coughs> okay, so... Um, and now what was I say what was I saying so you sir, okay one more thing always remember these prices are uh, you're the only one going out Garvit please yes, come sir. back before three I'm weeks so don't don't go out for three weeks now please come back <laughs> How, one minute Garvit <laughs> come back Hardik is out okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're not feeling well, you can go. Okay. So Aurora will take over the doorman duties. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. One more thing. Always. One more thing. Always that must be in your head. Always whenever look, whenever you're looking at these hockeystick diagrams, they are not adjusted for the time value of money, which is a cardinal sin in finance. So that thing should always be. That aspect should always click in your head whenever you're studying these the reason we plot as minus 25 actually it should be minus uh, a little more than that because you also have to fund that five dollar premium that five dollar let's assume this is a, like a one year option so you bought that five dollars at the beginning of the year where did you get the money from you assume that you borrowed it and paid the five dollars okay so you have to take the interest cost or the funding cost or the cost of equity at least or some kind of funding cost all capital has a funding cost so strictly speaking in finance to calculate your profit here the profit is actually less than five dollars uh, less than uh, the loss is more than 25 actually okay so this thought must always whenever you're looking at these hockey stick diagrams this must always you will still draw hockey stick diagrams without using time value of money because that is the way the market draws it the convention but whenever you draw it it must always click in your head that these are done without time value of money calculations which is a cardinal sin in finance we must always adjust for the time value of money so this consciousness should always be there in your head whenever you're looking at this that this remember that this there is a flaw in these diagrams because we don't adjust for the time value of money in practice you will have to adjust for the time value of money to calculate your true PL. The true PNL will be worse than 25, worse than minus 25, because you'll have to adjust for the interest cost of the five dollars. You paid five dollars at the beginning of the year, and this profit realization is happening at the end of the year. So, what about the funding cost of five dollars for one year? Remember that must always go through your head. Is this clear? Okay. All right. Now, uh, before we go, how? Oh. Wow, it's already quarter to uh, five to twelve. How did time pass so quickly? Let me just. Um okay, so I just want to give you the little bit of. Uh, this is today's uh, date. Okay. So I just wanted to give you this. I've given you the link already, and it's in your notes. Uh, so there's a lot of. This is on the thirtieth. Okay. So there's analysis of both Facebook and uh, Amazon on this. Okay. I hope my voice has. I don't know whether this this is only for the speaker. I hope it doesn't affect the, the mixer, mic volume. Mixer. I don't know what the mixer is actually. Yeah, if you click on the mixer, you'll get to see. So I think everything goes together. Is there a microphone? Anyway, we'll see. In the worst case, uh, you'll have to turn up the volume somehow. Okay, so I should have turned it out earlier. Turned it up earlier uh, because we don't know whether mic. Uh, I think the mic volume gets adjusted from the Flashback Express uh, menu. So, 
yeah so anyway so so we'll see so if you go to the beginning of this for some oh i think maybe this is the this this particular network doesn't allow me to stream youtube but anyway you look at it this particular program they analyze both uh, apple earnings and uh, facebook earnings okay so uh, therefore i think they've done the facebook earnings also because they came out on the same day and facebook has really done very well so please go through this you'll get to know a lot about how analyze uh, how analysts look at earnings okay so this is a very major profile if you're looking at an equity analyst kind of profile you'll get a very good even if, as a dead analyst you get to see a lot of the company analysis the kind of questions you look at the kind of metrics you look at there is a little bit of overlap between equity and dead analysts okay so therefore uh, for all kinds of jobs that's why i told you to focus on two three companies if you, in the us you take some big global companies like amazon uh, apple uh, netflix google google these are facebook uh, and in india India also you take some big large cap companies and you analyze what's happening all the news that comes out okay all kinds of news watch the stock price if you do this it gives you really good in-depth uh, understanding of some major companies okay but also what it does is because the basic questions that you ask the kind of logical analysis steps that you go through you can apply it later to all kinds of other companies you can learn a lot about how to apply it to other companies so uh, there's a process in uh, gain also in terms of how are you following what I'm saying yes so go back and watch it and then you get to see about all the things like uh, all the questions that the analysts ask okay so that's just that link is already there in your thing now we go on to our next topic which is so this linear payoff linear, we have already done and payoff and profit so please make sure you go through the logic that I covered okay and satisfy yourself on all the all the other um, <coughs> Uh, all the other other payoff diagrams okay profit and payoff diagrams okay so next topic that we are going to is positions and synthetic equivalents okay so here now we have now we are going to consider positions in first let's be clear about how many positions. now we actually have six positions because we are talking about positions in both options so how many types of options positions do we have four and how many types of underlying asset positions do we have two okay so we combine all together that means we have now six types of positions okay this is all in your notes these are your notes session outline is your notes everything is there there's a lot of uh, uh, notes now so there's no reason to complain you still should watch because everything can't be put into the notes so you should watch the video because a lot of detailed explanation which we are doing in the class okay all right so um, all right so now what, what are we going to do we're going to look at these positions and we are looking at synthetic equivalence okay so this is a very important concept in finance okay especially later on when we do arbitrage and things classical riskless arbitrage the concept of a synthetic position or synthetic equivalent what is happening you're disturbing her or you've taken a pen why have you taken a pen <laughs> oh it's your pen okay okay give give her give her you if you have two pens give her a pen so that <laughs> okay no anyway um, all right okay guys one sec let's concentrate so now we are talking about six positions we are talking about six positions underlying asset long underlying so this, this is the coding that I've used very simple you understand long underlying short underlying short put long put short call long call okay so I'm not gonna write it in full you can un uh, you can figure it out okay so we are now going to look at synthetic equivalent what is a synthetic equivalent a synthetic equivalent basically is uh, any position that allows you to create the same kind of economic outcome okay so if I'm saying synthetic equivalent of a long underlying okay long underlying what is the underlying outcome if you look at the payoff profile remember yesterday we looked at uh, well we don't want this actually here what is a synthetic equivalent okay this is our long futures position is this clear you remember we discussed this yesterday okay for those who are not there you have to watch the video again but we have discussed it yesterday why this is a payoff for a long futures position long futures long spot long forwards okay this is the futures position payoff because you are long at this price when the market price goes to this place you are making this much profit okay is this clear this is why uh, this is the long futures payoff profile so a synthetic equivalent is nothing but in this particular book may actually mention synthetic equivalents yeah 
so if you go through this uh, CME option strategies book which is in your option uh, which is in your uh, finance um, uh, reference folder from IPM okay uh, it's in your finance reference folder you will find this book you should have already downloaded this by now the CME option strategies if you look at this you will find that every position has a synthetic mention at the bottom as well okay so what do we mean by synthetic essentially this is how you think about synthetics okay synthetic is any other position okay so this is your long call this is your long futures position okay so a synthetic equivalent of uh, we usually talk about synthetic equivalents okay a synthetic equivalent of this is any any set of positions okay other than this position which indirectly creates the same kind of economic outcome okay this is by economic outcome we mean essentially the payoff let's talk about be more specific use the language of finance specifically and call it a payoff this is a payoff so any other set of positions which I can use so this is my long futures uh, profile okay this is my long futures payoff profile this is what is everyone clear about that we have discussed it yesterday as if I'm long at this price as the market goes up as the market price goes up I start to make money and as the market price goes falls below my the price at which I'm long I start to lose money okay so this is a long futures profile so a synthetic now we are trying to just understand the concept of a synthetic equivalent a synthetic equivalent is nothing but a position where any set of positions okay by which I can actually uh, create indirectly create the same payoff profile as this position so a synthetic equivalent of a long futures position will be any set of positions and other instruments okay uh, other instruments through which I can create the same net result is this point clear okay the concept is clear okay it's a synthetic equivalent okay now understand this let's understand the first example our first item anyway is long call long underlying long underlying so everyone clear about synthetics now you'll understand a little bit more once you see the first example okay so this is your um, I've given the the contents also for your 10th edition I think for Halbasu okay uh, no sorry this is for Natenberg Halbasu is 12.2 you have to go to 12.2 but I'm explaining it let's go to Hal 12.2 also <laughs> Okay, let's see what are we trying to create now. <coughs> we are, these guys haven't done, they've only done the option equivalence. Okay, we will do the futures also, so therefore we'll look at um, these guys have done um, only the okay so they have only done the option equivalence in this profile so let's go back to CME option strategies and let's look at this so this is your long futures position what is the synthetic equivalent of a long futures position anybody wants to guess just think about it conceptually knowing can you create a long position can you create the same result as a long futures position okay by using options is my question clear the result is basically we want the same payoff the result here we mean same payoff okay same in general terms we will say economic outcome in specific terms we can talk about payoffs now you understand what a payoff is payoff diagram okay so we want to this is a long futures uh, payoff diagram okay so we want to create the same payoff diagram now using other instruments the synthetic equivalent yes but I don't give, use the mic <coughs> is my question clear what are you trying you're trying to create the same result same payoff profile by using instruments other than futures now specifically using options how will you do it instead of going long futures what are my alternatives it's like saying instead of going straight from here to Gurgaon can I go by some other route reach the same destination create the same outcome okay so uh, yeah uh, so we can buy underlying asset uh, like this is already long underlying asset this actually is if you see so two options I'm saying one uh, minute let me this is a little bit too big let me make it a little smaller let's make it 150 where we can see maybe yeah so this is already long futures okay yeah so what I'm asking you is can you recreate the same payoff profile by using options 
this is futures now I, I don't want to go straight from here to Gurgaon I want to maybe by car taking the shortest route maybe I want to go by the metro okay so some other route so don't now I'm not talking about this straight route by the car so this is this equivalent of the futures position I don't want to take the long futures position but I want to create the same result as a long futures position by using options buying selling whatever you want to do calls puts buy sell can you is my question clear can we create the same result think about it this way okay long futures when the market rises above the strike price when this is the k right in your notes i have written it as k long underlying at k everyone understands this notation no need to expand it lu at k k is just a price okay k is just a price k is the same as a over here a is just indicating a price okay it could be 180 whatever it is okay so it's just indicating instead of a i've written k long underlying at k let's say let's go with this chart and let's look at k let's look at a so if i'm long at a okay let's say a is equal to 100 when the market rises above 100 i'm making money so basically what am i trying to do i'm trying to create a synthetic equivalent of the long futures position which means whatever i do conceptually think about it and let's say we are just talking about so what are the four options we have only long long call long put short call short put can i combine any of these options positions in some way to create the same result okay so let's look at one side of the result okay so one thing i must have is that when the market rises above the a when the market rises above a i should make money okay and when the market rises when the market falls below a i should lose money right if i have to have the same result here if i have the same if i must have the same result as the long futures profile right long futures position are you following my question what are we trying to do we are trying to do something it's like catching your ear like this okay so in I want the same outcome, but I want to do it in a different way. Okay, so instead of using futures, I want to use options and create the same result. So what is the result? Of, what are the two parts of the result that we have broadly? When the market rises above the price at which I'm long, okay, above the price at which I'm long, the, I should make money. And when the my market falls below the price which at which I'm long, I should lose money. This is what this profile is showing, right? Okay, so let's take the first part and let's do one thing since we are dealing with options. I've already given you a clue. You're not using swaps or uh, forwards or spot or anything. I've already given you a clue that you're going to use options only. So you have only four types of positions that you can take to create this position. So let's take, so in this case, let's set A equal to the strike of the option. Okay, let's take A and let's, since options have strike prices, let's since options have strike prices let's have a equal to the strike of the option okay so in this case what happens if i have a situation if i have a equal to the strike of the option and i want to recreate this profile with options okay long and short positions and calls and puts then one of the things i can do think about it what kind of position because remember what are we trying to get what are we trying to achieve one part of it just look at the right side we are trying to sit we must have a situation where when the market price rises above the strike price i should make money because we have already set now that a is the price at which i was long the futures and for this exercise i'm setting a equal to the strike price of the option because we know options have strike prices okay so try to follow the logic how we are trying to get to the solution so what do i need to have first part of half first half of it long call long call is one example because long call will make sure that when the market price rises above the strike price i should make money i will make money when when i if i'm long a call then when the market price rises above the strike price i should make money right but now is it enough just to have a long call because one ha what happens to the long call when the uh, when the market price drops below the strike price let's go back one minute short okay let's go step by step before i think parul may be jumping ahead a few steps let's go back to uh, the okay let's see we can if we can right let's see if we can uh, make you ignore the dotted lines let's focus on this c chart number c figure c okay forget about the dotted lines this black line is 
what position long call long call straight away you know it's a long because it's got the portion which is below the zero line <coughs> which means a loss okay loss but uh, it, uh, is a constant loss and this is must be a call because as the market price rises above the strike price this is another logic that we are introducing this position is making money if the market price rises above the strike price and for all situations where the market price is below the strike price there is no exercise there is no exercise that makes sense for a call because in the case of a call when the market price is below the strike price why should the person exercise because that means he is having to buy he has to buy the underlying asset at a price higher than the market price now he's not he's not a fool he's not going to do that he will not buy it at the at a price higher than the market price so therefore there is no exercise whenever the market price is below the strike okay so therefore it makes sense that this is a call profile just a dark line here okay so this you see the long call profile so we go first with what sakshi jain has told us that this is a we can use a long call so it satisfied part of our objective that it is giving us this part of the graph is fine because this part of the graph looks like uh, where did i okay so this actually is in the same this part of the graph here looks like what we need here right it has the right side of the graph it gives us the right side of the graph but the left side of the graph is not working out with a long call because you can see here it is symmetrically dropping this is why we said they are called symmetrical profile <coughs> spot forwards futures swaps we call them symmetrical pro uh, uh, non -li linear instruments okay so another set of words that we use is linear versus non linear and symmetrical versus asymmetrical okay symmetrical you understand symmetry means uh, equal on both sides basically there's some kind of balance so here it's symmetrical because basically you can see the chart looks the same whereas an option chart is not symmetrical an option payoff profile is not symmetrical because the look of the graph on either side of the uh, the cutoff point which is the strike price the look of the graph is not the same here it is uh, you know mo moving in line with the market and here it is a constant so it is asymmetrical so the, uh, in uh, re by referring to what we did, did yesterday one of the topics we covered yesterday was cement uh, linear versus non-linear payoff profiles and profit profiles for instruments and what we said was uh, spot forwards swaps options uh, spot forwards futures options uh, futures swaps sorry I keep being so spot forwards futures swaps okay we'll have linear profiles okay so in some cases of swaps will be some kind of convexity we don't need to worry about that but those are linear profiles so another word you can use for linear is symmetrical okay which is this this is linear and it is symmetrical because it is equal on both sides of that cutoff point okay and for for options we say non-linear okay and asymmetrical asymmetrical because it's not symmetrical this side is looking different from this side of the cutoff point okay so non-linear in other words is asymmetrical okay so the first part of the, the the long call helps us with this part of the curve because it's because it looks like this but th we need to create this part of the curve it's not matching with the long call position that we have okay so anything else so synthetic equivalent means you can use multiple positions and usually you have to use multiple positions okay so long futures we are trying to order what are we trying to do we are trying to create the synthetic equivalent of a long futures position okay so one part of it is correct one of the part one of the parts to our story will be long call uh, long call sorry what did i say long this is actually long futures this is long futures okay but we are trying to recreate we are trying to create a synthetic equivalent by using options okay of a long futures we are trying to create a synthetic equivalent of a long futures position by using options okay so one part of it is a long call position okay i'm going very slowly because i want to make sure that everybody goes baby steps okay everything should be clear okay all right okay now short now one is long call what is the next part any other ideas what else short put okay let's look at the short put what will the short put do for us let's look at okay let's look at a short put profile from here itself which is the short put profile here hmm? B is a short put 
Yeah. D is a short put. Yes. You agree? What happens in D when you're short? Obviously, it's a short position because you're making a profit. Okay. But is it a short put here? What happens? Let's look at it. It is showing that there is a loss. There is a loss when the underlying asset price. You're also going on. Hasn't somebody already gone out? No. Pratik is also out. Huh? You're having a headache. Okay. Now, what is it? you also <laughs> you want to go? Now, what who is outside? Pratik. Chuk is outside. Just wait. Tell all your batchmates to make sure that they come back properly. Uh, come back quickly on time. Garvid is back? Yes, okay. Garvid is not. <laughs> Once Garvid goes out, no, no one else can go out. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Let's get back to work. So, Sakshi is saying this is actually a short put. Let's check whether she is correct. It is showing a big loss at a, in a situation where the market price, let's take ST, let's take the last one, okay. It's showing a big loss, let's say assume that ST is here, okay. Now it's showing a big loss when the market price, when the market price is higher than the strike price. Is this clear to everyone? You agree with my assessment of the graph? The market price is higher than the strike price and the situation is showing a, a big loss okay which means the guy must have exercised and I had to have a I had to take a big loss to uh, you know basically satisfy his exercising the position okay to fulfill my contractual obligation now the question is when the market when the market price is higher than the strike price will the holder of a long put exercise when what are we seeing here this is graph D that she has referred to as a short put we are checking to see whether she is correct okay in this graph let's assume that this just perpendicular to this is the ST okay now ST is higher than K K is our strike price now if it is a long put and the market price is higher than the uh, than the strike price okay which is what we see here we are considering this situation where there's a big loss and we assume that we drop a perpendicular this price is ST okay are you following so far okay now when the market price is ST ST is obviously higher than K yes, yes? on the graph ST is higher than K yes, ST is the market price K is the strike price so when the market price is higher than the strike price will the holder of a put exercise no, no? because the right the put the holder has the right to sell the underlying asset at the strike price so why should I sell at K when I can sell in the market at ST is this clear so this cannot be a short put profile because even if he exercises actually this is a prof this is actually a loss if the guy exercises he will sell at K and have to buy back in the market at ST so he'll make a loss so if he's making the exercising the the guy with the long position is making a loss i being the short position holder i'll actually make a profit so this can't be a put, short put payoff profile is this clear have you understood i don't think everybody is 100 percent clear you need to go back and revise make sure you understand all these points that are being made are you following what i'm saying yes, yes sir. this cannot be a short put profile because in the short put profile it's showing that I have a big loss in satisfying the exercise uh, uh, of the option okay in fulfilling my contractual obligations under uh, in a situation where the holder of the option exercises the option I'm suffering a big loss this can't be because actually the holder of the option will suffer a big loss if he's holding a put and he sells at at the strike price of K and buys back in the market at ST he will suffer a big loss not me so this can't be a short put profile how can it be long if it is showing if it is showing profits above the zero line so this is actually indirectly we have discovered that this is a short call okay you two are involved in your own discussion they are disturbing you okay please pay attention to what is going on okay so one minute coming back to Tarun's point 
this can't be a long this can't be a uh, a long call position because it is showing a portion above the zero line mm -hmm. long call can't have a long position won't have a portion above the zero line so it's a short call so it's a short call eventually by the process of elimination you have come to the conclusion we saw that it could not be a short put okay we saw it could not be a short put then he said it's a long call uh, long put first whatever you said long put okay so that it can't be a long put because it's got a portion above the zero line so through a process of elimination short. you have come to the conclusion that this is a short call right so eventually like you know Sherlock Holmes have you heard of Sherlock Holmes yes. so Sherlock Holmes's uh, st strategy for analyzing cases was that as he told his uh, partner dr. Watson that once uh, once you have eliminated the impossible what, uh, whatever remains must be the truth so that's how he used to come out to the conclusion of what actually happened in the case okay by the way Sherlock Holmes case stories if you want to improve your uh, written English and even your that will also improve your spoken English okay you guys will may not want to read Charles Dickens and Shakespeare and all that but Sherlock Holmes I think everybody likes reading mystery stories Sherlock Holmes most of the stories are out of print out, out of copyright okay so if you go on and very very high quality English okay very good quality English correct English so one way of improving your written and spoken English is to go back just search on the web and you'll find most of the works of Sherlock Holmes are actually out of copyright Conan Doyle was the author and you can read those stories it'll be very good for your English comprehension English writing etc okay so sorry you bought it on net Netflix. No, then watching on Netflix won't improve your English. I'm I'm trying to improve your written English. Okay, I'm trying to improve your written English and your spoken English. And I I accept that you are not going to go and read Charles Dickens and Shakespeare. So I want you to read something which is which I think everybody will like reading. Okay, instead of writing these instead of reading these stupid modern writers, okay, whose English is very bad it's better to read Conan Doyle with very high quality English and stuff that is good for you okay is this clear okay watching TV is it's not really adding to your uh, your uh, skills yeah you watch proper business programs okay all right okay all right guys what have we come to the conclusion by a process of elimination we have come to the conclusion this D profile is a short call okay but it hasn't solved our original problem what is our original we still need to find something to create this this part of the profile we need some kind of option position which makes us lose money think about it we need some kind of option position uh, out of the four possible which is going to make us lose money when the market price drops below the strike this this particular long futures at this x price a we are taking this to be the equivalent of the strike price for uh, for the sake of uh, in the case of options we need some kind of option position which is think about it this way which is going to make us lose money when the market price drops below the strike price what kind of position would that be short put right so if you are going if we go short a put then as the market price drops below the strike we'll be losing money okay so now let's look at this let's go back to this and see <coughs> long and therefore if you see here when you look at this this is a very good book that you should also go through lots of there are 25 different option strategies lots of advanced strategies condors butterflies this that this can become an op topic for you remember for when you are preparing for your options uh, for your interviews not just for interviews but even for your uh, so here some, some somebody come back I thought you were going no Gil, why are you going out now? where is Chug now Chug has also gone on holiday what is this? What is this? Wait, wait, wait. Let Chuk come back. Where is Chuk? Call him. Where is Chuk? Call Chuk. Let him come back. Let's have some discipline. Otherwise, this didn't, then everybody can go out. What's the point? If one person can go, then everyone can go. Okay, guys. Let's get back to work. One minute. Let's get back to work. All these strategies. Uh, yeah, call him. Call him. So all these strategies here, all the CME option strategies, if you go through what I was telling you is this can be one of the topics you focus on. Remember when you're going for your interviews, 
you should have some questions ready they're gonna have two kinds of questions okay one is stuff they ask you out of the blue which you can't anticipate okay the second is then if you can't answer that or even if you can answer that they may ask you what have you learned what have you studied okay so uh, in that case you should be ready he's not answering okay just send him a message saying that he needs to come back so um, okay uh, so one of the topics you can have is uh, option strategies you can just master these 25 option strategies in the CME book okay uh, the, the, these include some very complicated strategies you can one of the topics will be option strategies okay you can actually uh, some of first one first one or uh, first and second are actually future strategies so make sure you understand everything but you should understand all the aspects of the situation okay in this book when you look at it for every strategy they have given you the synthetic equivalent okay and you can see now that the synthetic equivalent of of the uh, position that we had of the long position okay if we go for what happened Chuk? you're holding up lots of people now Mehab can go okay guys can you, I don't know if you can see see this but the, at the bottom you can see can you read are they last bench what does it say here Short put A, can you read that? Is the font big enough now? Garbit is on the last bench. Can you read this at the bottom? A, A is here. A is the strike. Long call A, long short put A means strike. A is the strike. Okay so this is where you see that if you see here now these guys have not recreated the synthetic position in the hull book okay but in the cme book you can clearly see what is happening and the premium from the long from the call and uh, put okay they more or less because what is happening when you're going long the call you have to pay out premium so that's a debit strategy okay remember we use these terms debit strategies and credit strategies so the long call part is a debit strategy but the short put part is a credit strategy okay so these two will more or less balance out okay it won't be exactly equal but they'll more or less balance out so between the two you will have this situation so as the market rises above the strike you'll make money on the long call as the market falls below the strike you'll lose money on the short put okay is this clear all right so the premiums will more or less balance out against each other one is an inflow one is an outflow so this is what we mean now you understand what is meant by a synthetic equivalent that we looked at one type of position which is long futures we looked at one type type of position which is a long futures position and then we created a synthetic equivalent of that by using other instruments by using option positions we by in this particular case we created a synthetic equivalent of a long futures position by using a long call and a short put is this clear yes sir okay what we are trying to do okay your uh, that tone should come little later it's now still 15 minutes left the tone of your voice is uh, already changing okay sense of urgency yeah. okay be quiet here guys be quiet okay so is this clear now i went slowly through this to make sure that everybody understood what is the uh, how you go through stepwise to figure out the answer and also what now you understood what is meant by a synthetic equivalent okay this is a very important concept in finance yes parul give her the mic oh, sir. give the mic yeah yeah yeah. Sir, I didn't find a reason to use synthetic equivalent. But what is the use of it? No, because uh, it's not. It's just really for conceptual clarity. But there are certain situations where, okay, I understand your question. Why do we bother with synthetic equivalents? Yeah, this will become clearer to you when we study the concept of arbitrage, because you'll see that. Uh, so it's a very good question, actually. What she's asking is, why should we bother with synthetic equivalents? Because sometimes in the in the markets you will have situations where you will find that the cost of that's why I've given you this you should if you really want to understand things okay if you really want to understand clear your concepts you should read the Nattenberg book also read your own textbook and the Nattenberg book your concepts have to be clear that is your responsibility only you know when your concepts are clear 
you should be able to satisfy yourself and you should not stop until then okay so if you read the Nadenberg book here also if you see here now under this particular module positions and synthetic equivalence which we are studying now I have given you two references Halbasu 12.2 okay and 12.2 is basically this I think what we are looking at now this is chapter 12 I think this is 12 point no, this is 12.1 and I've got 12.2 here um, I don't know why I've got 12.2 uh, actually I should have mentioned 12.1 <coughs> Or maybe it's a section yeah the 12.2 is not referring to a figure it's referring to a section okay this is in your book you'll find it this is your textbook so you should read this but you'll notice that I've also given another reference which is Nattenberg Sheldon Nattenberg which is also there in your finance reference book uh, set okay here you see now what is the equivalent why is the importance it's a good question why do we need to bother with synthetics the reason you need to bother with synthetics is sometimes you'll see that see here a very important concept which is important for arbitrage also to understand the concept of arbitrage if the results are the same if the results are the same then the cost or the price of the two assets should also be the same okay if there are two things which are identical uh, it's just like the law of one price okay which you might have come across earlier in your finance readings okay if two instruments or two contracts okay give you exactly the same rights then the price of the two of entering into the two contracts should be the same okay so if we are able to create exactly this uh, same profile okay and through some other instruments then the cost of creating it either through either route should be the same if it's not the same there'll be an opportunity for profit because I can go short in one because the positions are equivalent equal right so look at it this way now that you have the concept of synthetic equivalent now I can go long underlying okay it doesn't really cost me to go anything long underlying except for the funding cost of the of the premium if I'm buying a share for $120 okay I have to pay $120 per share a times number of shares that I'm buying so I need to fund that so there is a cost involved with that okay but what is the synthetic equivalent as we just found out of the long underlying at K the synthetic equivalent is long call at K plus short put at K yes okay we found that out just now okay now we can observe these prices in the market if we go back here we try to launch some uh, crude oil options Okay, so they'll take some time to launch but the point is that I can figure out these prices right I can look at the market and I can figure out what is the price of a call at K and what is the price of a put at K I can look at the market so if I find let's say if I find that uh, you know the cost of the left this is like a LHS RHS kind of situation right so this is the same as this okay so if I find that the cost of the long underlying side doing this if the cost of doing this is less than the cost of doing it this way then what I will do is I will basically sell this side of the position and I will buy this side of the position and I'll be able to lock in a profit are you following this okay how exactly we are going to do it we'll see later when we do arbitrage but conceptually this should be clear that if two instruments are equivalent okay or two two sets of instruments are equivalent here we have got one long futures on the left hand side we have long futures on the right hand side we have long call per short put okay we have here let's say Here. so we have a call option if we go long the put we long we are just taking the standard op uh, parameters given by this uh, software so if we go long the call and we go short the put 
okay we have a net debit on this side okay because we have to pay out 3.09 minus 3.02 minus 2.69 okay then we have on the other side also we have to look at the funding cost of the long call position of the long underlying position we have to look at the funding cost of that position also okay but the point is you will look at this uh, uh, the net cost of doing this what is the net cost on the right hand side here you can see again live option prices okay for these uh, different maturities okay all right so you can see all these the point is that you can observe these prices in the market okay what is the price of a call and what is the price of a put and you look at the net cost of doing it sorry this is what, what we need here so you have what you have already established is that long futures payoff profile should be the same as long call and long put a uh, long call plus short put with the strike price being the same price at which you're going long the futures right that one is clear that much is clear so one uh, and again what should follow from common sense that if the two uh, the two sets of positions on the one side you have only one position which is long uh, but you can still call it a set of positions okay but and on the other side you have two positions long call and short put if the two of them are going to produce the same results then the cost of entering into them should be the same because if it's not the same then we can make some money by taking the one which has got a higher cost and selling it and taking the one which has got a lower cost and buying it because then the net long and short position the obligations should square off because the results are the same is this clear conceptually this should be clear how exactly it will work in real life we'll see later but the point is conceptually this should be clear that what are we doing with synthetic equivalence we are creating the same payoff okay we are creating the same payoff and that's why we are bringing in remember payoff is not adjusting for the cost of entering into the position that's why we have the con separate concept of profit mm -hmm. profit adjusts the payoff for the cost of entering into the position okay so in the case of options we say profit payoff adjusted by premium gives you the profit profit or loss whatever okay so when that's why and so here the cost of entering into the position okay all this is already in your notes so you can just focus on understanding you don't have to write the stuff that is already in your notes okay but now try to understand this so if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side then the cost of entering into the two positions should be the same if it's not there should be an arbitrage opportunity that we we are going to what are we going to do obviously we are not fools we don't we don't buy the one with the higher price we sell the one with the higher price and we buy the one with the lower price okay because we know that's actually the same thing it, because they are synthetic equivalents so if you emphasize the word equivalent that means they are the same okay so then if they have this if the two things which are the same they should have the same price otherwise there's an opportunity to profit so that's why long answer to uh, parul's question but it's a good question that takes us into this cut right so this is why in finance we worry about synthetic equivalence because we always monitoring that's why if you you'll get a very good flavor of what i'm saying here as i said whatever we're discussing in the class your education is not complete as we can see you're not even able to absorb uh, and retain what is being taught in the class but you have to go beyond this and you have to do the readings that i'm telling you to do all these things will sink into your head if you do the natenberg readings also okay so this concept of constantly monitoring the cost of the synthetic equivalent in the market and immediately looking for arbitrage opportunities if there is any difference okay all that detail is there you can read that book okay so is this clear that's why we worry about basically now you understand why in, at a very base level we worry about synthetic equivalence so next synthetic equivalent guys short underlying long futures short futures what will be the synthetic equivalent of this yes but before going you can answer the question <laughs> oh she is going okay no so bharat can answer bharat can answer yeah what is one minute we have asked bharat is the question clear now we are looking we went through long underlying we are going through one by one what is in your notes we have to look at six positions and we have to look at the synthetic equivalence of each of those six positions we have done only the first position long underlying we found that the synthetic equivalent is long call plus short put now short underlying 
I watch you only. <laughs> I have given you the answer. So, <laughs> okay. Let's see whether it makes sense. Long put the answer already in your notes. I should not have put it there. But anyway, so the answer is already there. But, huh? One minute. <laughs> she is outside. How can you go? One minute. Okay. Let's satisfy ourselves. What are you saying? So, what is the answer? Long put and short call. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let's take the short call part, part first. Is this making sense? Let's take the right hand side of the chart first. As the market is rising above the strike price, as the market price is, this is the market price scenarios, and this is my strike price. As the market price is rising above the strike price, my losses are getting bigger and bigger. Okay, this is consistent with a short call. If I'm short the call, and as the market price rises higher and higher above the strike price, I'm losing money. Yes, Mehak? Does your WhatsApp say the same thing? <laughs> Is it saying the same thing? Okay. So now tell us. Tell us. <laughs> what is oh what is? <laughs> Okay. Now Mayak, you answer the second part. Answer the second part. What have they said? Let's see how plugged in you are. This what position is this? <coughs> Give her the mic. Mic now, mic. <laughs> one minute, Bharat, They don't have to uh, clown around you and SG one all the time. Sorry. Just be quiet and uh, restrain yourself. Yeah. What position is this? No, this is short call. Short. This is short call. Put this chart. This chart. What position is this? Position? What position is this chart? This is a short futures position, same as a short spot position, short forward, short, short for swap. Okay. Now, now we are trying to create the synthetic equivalence. One of them they have suggested, Pulkit suggested that, and others also suggested that one part should be short call. So short call helps us with the right side of the graph because as the market rises above the strike price i'm losing money continuously bigger and bigger sums of money proportionately okay so that makes sense if i'm short a call and the price is rising above the uh, strike price i'm losing money because the call holder is making money right so now what is this this part what is the other part of the answer one is short call the next one is long put now tell me why long put makes sense here if I'm holding a long put, what should happen to my profile as the market? This part is for situations where the market price is falling below the strike price. When the market price is falling below, falling below the strike price, should I be making money if I'm holding a long put? Yes. Yeah. Why? I've explained this logic many times. You're too busy with your WhatsApp. Even when we separate you from your buddies, you're now looking at WhatsApp, virtual buddies, WhatsApp. Facebook users have gone up. Monthly users have gone up a lot, very dramatically. In this earnings, they focus on daily active users, monthly active users. Mayhuk is adding to the figure. Okay. All right. So this should be, this is correct that this is a long put because if I'm long put, if I'm long a put, the answer should be given like this. I have the right, one minute guys. Class is not over yet. So I think this will be in the money. So no, the way to answer it is the long put gives you because the question was is it consistent with a scenario where uh, as the market price falls further and further below the strike price I'm making more and more money because this is what the chart is showing the chart is showing that that's consistent because the put gives me the right to sell the underlying asset at the strike and the more the market price falls below the price below the strike the more is my intrinsic value the greater is the intrinsic value between the greater the profit I can capture from exercise. So that's why this is consistent with a long put position. So the answer is correct. It is short call plus long put. Okay. Is this clear? Okay. So this is done for today. But you guys have to do this. We, we need to move faster. Okay. Uh, we have to cover all these. Please make sure you revise on your own at home. Okay. 
all right so we'll try to cover as much as we can we have to cover ball calc a lot of the stuff i've already put the notes into your note or uh, whatever we are going to cover into your notes so you can read ahead also at the bare minimum cover these synthetics very important concepts make sure everybody understands it inside out you have to practice it till you can do it in your sleep is this clear may I no whatsapp you have to jam your signal okay any technical questions anybody who has no Ajay Bharat Bharat has a question Anyone else No question Okay. 